This video is the third and last part of my series on building a generic looking structure. This part focuses on painting, detailing and weathering. Now that the roofs and wall sections of the structures have been built and assembled, it's time to start painting them. I used masking tape to protect the glue tabs and all the other places where the glue for the final assembly would go. Before painting with the actual colors, I used Vallejo 74.601 gray surface primer, slightly thinned with Vallejo 71.161 airbrush thinner, so the nozzle of the airbrush doesn't clog up too quickly. Painting small parts, like the doors, tends to be a bit tricky, so I used double-sided sticky tape to attach them to a piece of wood, so I could use it as a handle during the painting process. The foundation of the loading dock received two different colors. The part facing the yard was painted with a mix of mostly Tamiya XF2 flat white and XF7 flat red. The side facing the tracks received a coat of XF19 sky grey. I used the same mix of white and red for the lower part of the yard facing walls of the bigger structure as well. After letting the paint dry for a couple of days, I started masking off the red stripe before painting the rest of the structure. I used 10mm Tamiya masking tape. 8mm would have been a better choice, but I didn't have any on hand, so I used the loading dog base to judge where to tape. I used a toothpick to push the tape into the ribs of the main structure. This is actually the first time I used masking tape to create a multicolor paint job, so feel free to leave any tips in the comments. Then I proceeded to paint the roof section with a mix of white, sky grey and the walls with a mix of white, sky grey and buff. After the paint had fully dried, I removed the masking tape. The separation line turned out reasonably clean, with only minor imperfections that should be easy to hide behind a little bit of weathering. The doors received either a mix of sky grey and white, or a mix of sky grey and white with a couple drops of XF52 flat earth. Now that the structure has been painted, it's time to prepare the asphalt lot. I've cut a piece of black 030 or 0.75mm thick styrene to the appropriate size. Before gluing it into place, I sanded the spot on the module and one side of the styrene with 180 grit sandpaper. Since I've used solvent-based contact cement with styrene sheets before, I try to use it here as well, but polystyrene foam is a lot more sensitive to the solvents in the glue than the polystyrene sheets are, so I had to switch to odorless contact cement and wait a couple of days for it to fully cure. When the contact cement had fully cured, I painted the asphalt lot with a base coat of Tamiya XF24 dark grey, followed by a very light layer of XF53 neutral grey, sky grey and XF78 wooden deck tan. I made sure that the previous colors would still show through to achieve the mix of colors typically visible in asphalt surfaces. Now it was time to prepare the areas around the asphalt lot. I used regular wall paint marketed as gravel color and sprinkled a bit of rock powder into the half dried paint to add a bit of texture. Before finally gluing the structure parts, I decided I'd need more support for the building, so I've added an additional mounting plate to both parts of the structure. Now it was time to start assembling the structures. I glued the doors in place, but left the roof off for the moment. Then I drilled 3mm holes into the mounting plates for the bolts, making sure that I don't apply too much pressure while drilling. I'm also carefully mining the position of my fingers to avoid injuring myself. Then I marked the positions for the holes in the module top using the holes in the mounting plates as references. Usually I'd simply drill a 5mm hole into the top plate of the module and use a knurled nut and a nylon washer to tighten down the structures. But since the module top is built from XPS foam board instead of wood in this location, I need to build a little support structure from styrene tubing and a piece of styrene sheet to distribute the forces across a wider area. I'm using Evergreen 229 tubing with an outside diameter of slightly over 7mm, so I'm drilling through the styrene sheet of the asphalt lot with a 7mm drill bit. Drilling holes through styrene results in a bit of a mess and the styrene tubing provides smooth walls and protects the XPS board from further damage from the mounting bolts. 
I sanded the styrene tubing until it ends up just a bit below the asphalt lot surface and glued it to 060 styrene pieces about 40mm squared. Then I glued the support structures in place with odorless contact cement. I built the channels for the lighting wires the same way using evergreen 234 tubing with an outside diameter of about 11mm. While I was waiting for the glue to set, I also glued the mounting bolts in place with contact cement. After tightening down the structures, I glued the roofs on to make sure that the final structure conforms to the ground sheet. Then I proceeded to solder the fence sections. I used 0.6mm steel wire as additional support for the fence. After cleaning the assembled fence with warm soapy water and thoroughly rinsing it, I airbrushed the fence with sky grey. In order to install the fence, I drilled small holes into the plywood sidewalls of the module and simply pushed the steel wire supports into the foam everywhere else. I decided to put in the fence first and then put down the ground cover around the asphalt lot because on the Olive Street module I did it the other way around and found it a bit hard to get the fence properly level. First I put down the gravel around the asphalt lot and then wetted down the area before applying the diluted white glue. Then I sprinkled down fine ground foam until I liked the general look and added some coarse ground foam for variety. A few spots with steady grass and a couple of shrubs complete the landscaping around the industry for the moment. Then I started brush painting the electrical equipment with XF24 dark grey and glued it in place with CA glue. I painted the loading dock bumpers Tamiya rubber black. Before gluing them to the loading dock I used a bit of sky grey on a brush with relatively stiff bristles to represent chipped paint on the concrete foundation before gluing the bumpers to the loading dock. The stairs are from the Walters Modern Warehouse Kit. I intended to use the handrails that come with the kit, but unfortunately those break very easily and worse yet are molded the wrong way around so that the nice side faces towards the building. So I had to resort to building my own from 0.3mm spring steel wire. I painted it with Tamiya XF3 flat yellow before gluing it to the stairs. Since I went through the trouble of building gutters for the roof of the larger structure, I also wanted some downspouts as well. I also wanted them to angle away from the building at their bottom ends. I built the downspouts from Evergreen 132 styrene strips. First I cut a short piece at an angle of about 30 degrees. This piece is longer than the bottom section will be in the end, so it's easier to handle when gluing the pieces. Then I cut the end of the styrene strips square again and then glued both pieces together. When the glue had set, I cut the bottom end to the desired length. I painted the downspouts with Tamiya XF16 flat aluminium before installing them on the structure. I also wanted to try out lighting the inside and outside of the industry. For the exterior lighting I glued warm white 0402 LEDs into 3D printed fixtures which I painted with XF1 flat black. To mount them I drilled 0.8mm holes for the wires and secured them with a drop of CA glue which I applied with a toothpick from the inside. For the interior lighting I mounted cold white LEDs into the ceiling. To prevent light bleed into the roof I cut pieces of 1mm black styrene and glued them into the roof. Then I stuck the LEDs into place with strips of captain tape and put a drop of CA glue on the LEDs to fix them in place. After the CA glue had cured I added 10mm strips of the black styrene to make sure that the light goes mostly towards the front of the building. To keep unruly forklift drivers from crashing into the electrical gear, I cut two about 20mm long sections of 0.6mm steel wire, painted them yellow and glued them into holes in the styrene ground sheet. I also added an air conditioning heat pump to the side of the loading dock structure. After this I started weathering the structures with pan pastels. 
I tried to keep the weathering on the larger structure light to give it the appearance of the more recent construction. I used mostly 820.5 neutral grey for all purpose dirt and 820.2 natural grey extra dark for stronger dirt built up behind nearby vegetation and the loading dock bumpers. I also used 740.1 burnt sienna extra dark and 740.3 burnt sienna shade on the loading dock roof. I mostly used a soft brush to apply the pastels. The streaky application on the loading dock concrete base was done with a brush with relatively stiff bristles. Generally, it's important to pay attention to the brush movements, meaning that the application should be vertical on roofs and walls and more of a stippling motion on horizontal surfaces to avoid streaky application in places where water would just pool up instead of running off. Then I sealed everything with clear coat and glued the windows behind the forklift gates in place with canopy glue using Evergreen 005 or 0.13mm thick clear styrene for the windows. This completes this project, at least for the moment. So what did I learn from this project? One thing is that internal bracing for scratch built structures is really important. The front of the larger structure isn't quite flat. I started building the structures for the Olive Street module after this one and I built those with straight styrene strips at the top and bottom of the side walls and that worked a lot better. I think I'll also give up on internal lighting for the moment. The cold white LEDs I used are way too dim and way too blue. I thought the light color might work well for representing fluorescent lighting but the color is just off. I'm still pretty happy with how everything turned out. Time to move on to new projects.